Anybody who previously had used Microsoft Access as a front end to SQL Server, perhaps using the ADP file format or linking tables to your SQL Server, then you'll find that things have changed quite dramatically in this version of Access. The ADP file is no longer supported. If you are still running ADP files, you will need to retain an older version of Access to use those files. They will physically not open in Access 2013. Having said that, in their place, we have what's called the Custom Web App, which allows you to use Microsoft Access to create custom web applications. Now those custom web applications are effectively databases held in the cloud. As we've said previously, with the rest of the suite, everything is now becoming much more cloud oriented. Now where is your database held in the cloud? Well, it's held on a SharePoint server, either under Office 365 online, or internally, if you've got SharePoint servers in your company. Having the SharePoint servers in place, we then move to Access to look at the mechanics of actually creating a custom web app. There is a big button, the first one in fact, custom web app. So we choose custom web app and the custom web app dialog box appears. It needs a name other than my new app. I'm going to call mine training. We then have to tell it where to store the web app. And I've got two available locations. I'm going with the MY Bytes team site. And you'll see the web location is then filled in automatically for me, which is the SharePoint server on Microsoft 365. And then create. We're then connected through. Is this the right login? It is. If you haven't logged in previously, you'll get the login box first. Sign in. I need to know the password. Sign in. And my training application is created. Here's a little tab to get me started. And effectively, I now build a database, but that database is held in the cloud. So I can create tables using the templates. That's the easiest way, really. So let's do a quick search on person. And then we have different person templates. And the table is then created for me using the client template. Alternatively, you can follow the option just to the right, add a new blank table, which will allow you to create a new table from scratch. We can see the table then appears on the left hand side listed as clients. Click clients. It will open the table where I can actually choose the option in the middle here to edit the structure of that table. So once we've clicked edit, now we can add existing fields from the current table. And you'll see that opens a little window that shows all the fields in and we can close that. We have some very similar controls across the top here that you will be used to from the main access. So we've got tick boxes, text boxes, labels, etc., and they can be dragged and placed onto your form or page. We can move objects around the page. So I could move web page down to there. The label would need to go with it. And then maybe move the country and region across. Move the notes up. So we control click to multiple select and things can be moved around. They can be resized. You may, for example, want the notes underneath the label so that you can resize the box. Any changes can then be saved by going to file and save. That's your client list form. The tab there for training is your training database, your training web app, and there's currently one object. So we can add multiple tables. We can create further objects, views. For example, here's the create room, create a new table, we can create a view, and then there's an advanced option for creating macros, data macros, on start macros, and queries. So there's a lot in this custom web app. The whole process is really about building the backend database and then all the forms that you build will be visible through the actual web app itself. And you can launch that from here, launch the web app, and that will open your default browser and take you to the web app address, which effectively is your SharePoint server address. So I'm asked to log in. The SharePoint server is a secure server. This is my training application that I built from Access. And you can see here, it's loaded the same form that I was playing with in Access and the notes section is wider and I've moved the web page down. And you can effectively now enter data into the SharePoint database that is sat behind here. And then save. So now I'm listed in the database and I could add a new record by clicking plus. And again, save. And then I've got two records. 
So you can see the client list starts to build up. Now, if I go back from my web application to Access, in Access, I could create a new view. So that's on the Home ribbon and then View. What's the view name going to be? Client Names. What kind of view is it? It's going to list the details, data sheet, view, summary, or a blank view. Where does it get its records from? Well, there's only one table at the moment. That's the client's one. And then we can add a new view. That view is then created here as client names. And I can come down and edit. So I want some data on my view. Select the fields that I would like. And I drag them in. There's the first name, the last name. To save the changes to my view, we go to File and Save. After refreshing, the client names is now here in the menu bar. So I can choose client names and it will load my client names view. Now that's the basics of a custom web app through Access, but obviously there's a lot more involved in building and designing. But the mechanics are that in the cloud, you need a SharePoint server, whether that's hosted with Microsoft or whether that's hosted at your own corporation. And in the front end, you need Access 2013, and then they will work together.